Hey guys, it's Vivian, the Dark Pharmacist. So, I told you guys I was going to be doing the YouTube Pagan Challenge. And just to clarify, I'm finishing up 2016's before I start 2017. So, just in case any of you guys were wondering, well, those aren't the questions for the month. Why are you getting them confused? That's why. Because it's not not on 2017's yet. I'm sure you guys are like really weird angle. I have you propped up on my knitting, beginner knitting kit. Um, right up my nose, sorry. <laughs> I just, it's, it's late, so I actually need to go to bed soon. This probably isn't going to be that long of a video. So, we're just going to jump right into it. <clears throat> so, for the weeks, I believe it's, I'm on week 10 and week 11. They have it set for two different weeks. I think it's week 10. Yeah, week 10, uh, how do you feel about moon phases and how do they work for you? And then week 11, how do you feel about the sun and how do you work with it? So I'm just going to do them together. Um, so the moon has always been a very important, very powerful thing for me. Like ever since I was a little kid, I was obsessed obsessed with the moon. I mean, I can remember being on long road trips with my mom and just staying up all night staring out the window at the moon. It's always been something that's been such such a symbol of magic and mystery to me. It's always been something that has drawn me into the darkness and not the darkness like that, but like the darkness and the mystery about it. The pure magic and the romance of the moon. It's just always been something that's lured me in when I was little and we were learning about the gods and the goddesses I knew right off the bat Diana she was the goddess of the moon she was it was a, an immediate calling and I mean well that's another story I guess for when I talk about you know who's your deity and those questions like that but the moon phases they're always been something that's always fascinated me I mean, how the moon controls the earth and the water and how it's all tied together and how it's, there's so much power in it. And to think about back in the olden times that our ancestors, that they actually worshipped the moon as it was an actual deity. I mean, yes, today, now we know it's not, it's, it's made of rock, like it's different, but just the mystery and the pure magic like even back then they knew that the moon held such power it held such presence and all about it it's it's amazing i absolutely adore it 100 percent. like i'm not even kidding when i tell you i could sit outside for 10 hours if i could and just watch it just sit there and look at the moon i love it it just brings a whole new sense of cleansing to me. It's a whole new sense of purification, being touched by the light of the moon that cleanses you on a whole different level. As the moon projects its light down into you, no matter where you are, but you become a vessel for that cleanly, the cleanly, I can't even fucking talk, I'm sorry. But you become a vessel for that light. When they talk about drawing down the moon, it's not just about being... I don't even know how to explain it fully into words, but it's not just about being here underneath the moon, but you become one with the moon. You become that vessel of transformation that beholds that power that's drawn down onto you from the moon. It's an amazing thing. I could talk about it all night, <laughs> but I'm not going to do that because I have to go to bed soon because I got to get up work, get up early for work. But so the full moon. It's an automatic connection to me with my ancestors. I, automatically, every time I look at the full moon, I think about how as I'm looking at this moon, I'm sitting here and staring at the same moon that my ancestors once sat there and stared at and worshipped under. It's an automatic connection for me. Anytime I do a full moon ritual, it automatically involves calling upon my ancestors every single time. And I'm not going to lie, there's been a couple moons that have passed recently and I haven't done full moon ritual and I've been wanting to so bad but just haven't done it like laziness as far as like I need to get up ready and get up early for work or things like that and 
Like, I've done other things. I'm not just not doing anything, but I haven't done my full moon ritual, my full ritual. And, I mean, it takes a quite a bit of time, and I love it that way. And I love my doing my rituals, And but with how much time it takes, and then not being able to do it till later on at night because of the kids. I gotta get up, I gotta wait for work, and sometimes it just causes. But it's only been twice now, and I'm not gonna let that happen. I'm just, I gotta do it because I want to. It's not that I feel like I have to, it's because I want to. Anyway, I'm sorry I'm rambling, but so the full moon, automatic connection with my ancestors, anything, it just holds so much power. Anything that you want, that you can, that you feel that you need to do, that moon can help you with that. That's why I feel like some people say the moon is the ultimate energy. I mean, I do feel like the full moon has its own energy. I'm not, it, the power behind it though, can help you with just about any spell any working because it is a form of pure power and pure energy that's why you can use it for pretty much any spell me personally I feel like the moon has its own attributes so in a way the moon its own correspondences would be specific for certain spells that's me personally not everybody feels that way but that's personally my opinion you don't have to feel that way you don't have to at all I'm not saying that <laughs> just saying but like I said because power is something that the full moon holds that is one of its correspondences that's one of its attributes using that power can be attributed to any kind of spell or working so you can use it for anything just in my personal view on it I see it differently than a lot of other people do but I mean the full moon, just its majesty, its greatness, like you, here I am, I'm going to go on this huge ramble about how wonderful the full moon is. Not a lot of people that I've noticed, I mean there are quite a few, but not a whole lot of witches that I know actually work with the moon phases, like they don't use it as a constant guide to their practice, which is okay, I mean you don't have to work with the moon, you can work with whatever the fuck you want if you feel like it makes you, it's right for you. So I just, I found, I thought it was interesting because when I first, when I very first started associating and realizing, oh, what I'm doing is witchcraft, I'm a witch. When I really started to really realize that and getting more into this and studying that, I thought every, you know, every witch worshipped the moon. Like, not worship, but every witch worked with the moon. I thought it was just that. But it's not, that's not true and it's a huge stereotype and we're kind of bad for thinking that. Wow, we're already on eight minutes and I've only talked about the full moon. Sorry. <laughs> so, the full moon, like I said, it, the power behind it, you can because one of its correspondences is power. You can use it for just about any spell, any working, anything you want. I use the full moon to me. It's power. It's pure psychic energy. It's transformation. It's the ultimate transformation. And ancestor work. I mean, there are other things that I can that I associate the moon with too, but those are my main things. Any kind of water working, you know, water witchcraft, like sea magic, that's automatically I feel completely drawn to with the moon. <coughs> Sorry. Um so then um the new moon, the black moon. Shadows. I mean like I've said before, I personally think that shadow work is something that you should, it shouldn't be, and I don't like saying this because it sounds off, but what I mean is I don't think shadow work should necessarily have its own care category. I feel like it is something that you should be doing all the time, every day, all the fucking time. You fucking need to work with your fucking bullshit and get the fuck over it. Just my opinion. Not everybody feels that way, just my personal opinion. But... The new moon, really, it's purification, it's cleansing, it's the ending of the old and the beginning of the new. It is time to clear out that bullshit and get rid of it and fucking move the fuck on. That is what I use the full moon, or no, I'm sorry, not the full moon, the new moon for a lot, the black moon. I do my black moon rituals, which take three nights, and I work on a dis different aspect of myself. It's a ritual that is sacred to my tradition, so it's not like I'd be able to show you guys it, but it's... You do want to learn more about my tradition. 
my teacher, Raven Ramasi, is amazing. I love him to death. I love Stephanie to death. They are amazing people. They have books on our tradition that you can, they have rituals in it and they go about it and they talk about it and, you know, you can learn all of the full moon ritual from the Thorn-Blooded Witch, Witch book is based on our ritual that we do. So that is an amazing, it works on three nights and you work with the three daughters of night and each of them has a different aspect, shadow, blood, bone, and it goes from there. So that is another, not necessarily ancestor worship to me, but more on honoring and working with the kin of witchcraft, the old ones, those witches who had come before us. That is a big part of my black moon ritual, my new moon ritual. It's a big part of just being within that energy. It's time to cleanse out the old and bring in the new, but it's also time to honor what has come before in the old. It's time to acknowledge it. Um, you definitely pull up, like I said, your shadows, shadow work. It's, you know, some people classify it as shadow work. You want to pull out those inner shadows, those inner demons within yourself. Let them go. Don't let it be a burden. You want to connect with that ancient witch within yourself and to really, truly connect those shadows, that shit that you hold deep down inside you, it can weigh you down. It brings you too much in a mentality state. Mentality state. It brings you too much in a mental state to connect yourself to the daily world. And at least for me, when I'm really trying to connect with that inner woods witch within myself, that true, deep, primal energy, being so focused and connected to the daily world and the stresses and the bullshit, it weighs me down, man. Like, it fucking I can't stand that shit so that's a good thing that I like it helps clear that fucking bullshit out gets rid of that you don't need that shit when you're trying to connect to the primal energy within yourself you will go fucking mad <laughs> just saying <laughs> but so connecting and letting go number one for me with the new moon number one this is going to be really short because <laughs> You know, the last two, because we're already on 12 minutes, and I feel like I've been rambling the whole fucking time. I'm very sorry. So, <clears throat> waning energy. The waning moon, banishing, getting rid of. You want to completely clear out the path for you, so when the waxing moon comes around, you can bring it all in. What you want to clear out, you want to supplement and bring in something else. So, I like I did with the banishing poverty spell. Now that the moon is waxing, I'm going to completely supplement it with a bringing prosperity to me. You want to banish the what you don't want, and you're going to supplement it and bring forth what you do want. And in my, the way I practice personally, I feel like you can't do one without the other. If you were going to get rid of something, you need to bring something to you to let it go full circle. Because if you just get rid of something, you have... This empty energy field, in a way, at least that's how I think about it, open. And it's going to supplement it with something else. And it's going to, if you're not doing your workings, that you're wanting to bring something to you that you actually are in need of or in want of, it's going to supplement with something else. It's going to fill that void with something else. And it's going to end up being something that you either you don't want or it's just going to go back to the way it was. I mean, yes, not everybody's like that because some, you know, but. Or not everybody views it that way. I'm just saying that, that is how I would view it. You really want to come full circle with your practice. You want to make sure you balance it out. All the ends and odds and fucking everything. <laughs> so, the waning moon. To banish, to rid, to cleanse. To get ready for that new energy. And when the new energy comes around, you want to bring to you. Whether it be prosperity, love, friendship, psychic energy um protection whatever it is the when the waxing moon comes around that's when you bring it all to you it's life is a constant balance it's a circle you just bring yourself around like the circle of life in especially working with the powers and the forces that we work with you need to be one with that spiral energy you need to be one within the current of balance and so the moon, no matter which way you're working with it, it's a giant 
balance of energy and that is what you need to learn to focus on at which phase if you're going to work with the moon learn to really look at each phase and bring to you and do what you i mean what i just said about how i work with the moon yours could, could be completely opposite and backwards like that and that's your personal preference that's your personal preference look at the way the moon acts with you or feels to you and work with it and it, you know become your own balance of energy become your own spiral it's just how you perceive it so real quick the sun <laughs> this might end up being in two parts and if it is i'm really sorry because i know a lot of people don't like that because they never want to watch both of them i don't know but so the sun the sun the sun the sun any kind of growth any kind of kind of bringing towards the sun is the ultimate bringer of life plants and the trees like they cannot live without the sun yes the earth is a main component to them but they are ultimately sun worshipers i actually read that saying in a book recently and i did, it stuck with me ever since because it's true the sun brings to you it brings everything absolutely everything that's why the sun is associated with success, business, money, prosperity, transportation. I mean, it's protection. The sun, I don't, I'm not even going to lie though. I don't work with it as much. It's not something that I, at least at this time in my practice, that I really do much with. Like uh, when you're working with the sun, the main which you would say correspondences are you because the sun it transitions every couple 24 hours so you work with it hourly unless i think or god i think that's right i see and i don't want to give you any not any of the eh, blah, blah, blah. god i can't fucking talk i'm so sorry i don't want to tell you anything that's not true so the sun's not really something i work with but those are what i view as the sun as when i at least at this time in my practice when i if i was going to work with it so, I actually think I'm going to end this video because my camera's about to cut off. So, good night, everybody. Blessings.